Hey, Dave Locali with Head Games Motorworks. Today, we are going to show you how we're going to digitize and cut a 4G63 head. Check it out. So a lot of guys think that you can actually just stick a cylinder head, any cylinder head, in a CNC machine, and there is nothing to do before that. The machine's just gonna know how to port it, or you're gonna figure out how to port it on the machine. Which is actually farthest from the truth. We actually have to, we, we hand port the head first. We hand port it, we put it on the flow bench, we valve job it, we test an R&D, all that process. Then it gets digitized on the CNC machine. There has to be a plate. There is a plate that bolts this cylinder head down in the machine, you have to digitize it, you turn it into a tool path, and then you can cut. It's a very long process. This is nothing that you're gonna do in two hours. And uh, follow along, and I'll show you all about it. So after the machine does all the digitizing, you bring it into Mastercam, and Centroid has its own Mastercam software. You bring it in to Mastercam and it gives you all these dots. Now, this is not where it ends. Even though you have your port here, these lines here don't always look this clean. So you have to clean up all of those lines to make it sure that you're gonna get a clean cut. And once you do all that, and uh, so there's just, there is a called splines. And once you clean up the splines, you see like, this one here has like a little kick out here. Once you clean up the splines, this is intake, here's the exhaust. So now you have, you can put in here, let's put the surface on. There's uh, the surface. So now you're gonna put a surface to it. So this is where the exhaust port, and this is where you can kind of see what you're gonna get in the end. You don't see the whole thing then, notice that it's blocked in half. So each valve, each valve is called a port basically. And it digitizes the whole front of the port and then it goes up into the one side. And then you would have to do the other side. So once you do the other side, now you actually have your port. So each thing is gone right in the middle, you put your surfaces on it, and that's how you make a port. Here's another look at that. Here's the exhaust port. This is the raw data. And here you can see, basically this is how the CNC machine interpolates, interprets what's going on there. So you would have all of these lines here have to line up. They have to be smooth lines or it's not gonna turn into a surface. And um, you see each valve, that's how it turns out. Now you're probably thinking, how does it even know where to go? Well, it all stems from the plate. So let's back out here a little bit. And we're gonna add, um, let's add the plate. Yeah, here's the plate. The plate is what the head bolts down to. And once the head is bolted down to the plate, see this bolts here and bolts into the machine. Cylinder head bolts to the plate here and these bolts here, just regular head bolts. And then here is your combustion chamber. So if we add, let's add some surfaces here so you can see it. So that's like the geometry of it. See it shows the geometry of the entire plate and how it relates to the cylinder head here. Let me turn that off though. The combustion chamber surface is here. And you can take off the raw. It's basically your, here's your port. So it's almost like in space, it doesn't show the whole entire cylinder head. It's only gonna show the ports and what you actually need for cutting. Now this is not the end of it because Obviously a machine has to come in here and cut all this. How do you figure that out? It's a very expensive machine. The last thing you wanna do is collide with anything. And this is why you have the geometry that the head could possibly run into the machine, or I should say the machine should run into the cylinder head 
and that would be the plate here. So the geometry of the plate needs to be there. And now you also see these are things hanging off the head, either a stud or a water neck, anything that the machine could collide into, you want to put it in the program because, well, you don't want to crash it. Here we have the tool pan. So the tool is going to come in here, the cutting tool is going to come in here and it's going to cut all these lines. So here's your surface. I made this a little separate so you can see what's going on here. But this is the way the machine's going to run the program. And you can see here, basically the machine comes up, comes down, it cuts this, this section here, it comes up, and then it comes down and it goes into that section here. So this is the tool path. You see it's come down here, and it cuts only to this section here. And once it cuts this section here, it's going to come to the other side of the port. It's going to come in, and it's going to cut this section of the port. Now these lines here, are the lines that you see in your CNC port. They also call it the step over rate, and you guys can look that up, but everybody does a different step over rate. Obviously, the bigger the step over rate, the faster it's gonna cut and get done, but it's also gonna be very rough. Now we're gonna verify the operation, because you absolutely do not want this thing to run into anything. And here, you see the machine coming down, and making your cut, you want to make sure that your port is what you say it is. So here it is. I've just made the two little cuts. Just did the intake port. So this is basically how the port's going to look when it's done. And now we're going to verify it on the machine. What it's going to cut with is this little cutter here. Uh, most of the cutting happens with this, this little cutter here, and it's in this body. Um, so it goes into like a collet, collet goes into the machine. This is a special made product just for the Centroid and it said it's a 3 8 little porting tool and um, this is how it's done. Now here's a quick look at the plate. So the plate, you're gonna use two dowel pins, just like an OEM, like a cylinder head. You use the dowel pins, and then as I said, here's the holes. The cylinder head gets bolted into the machine. And as you can see here, this is how it works. So this is where the combustion chamber would go. Combustion chamber is right here. And as I said, you, this is all the geometry that you need to, in order to do the CNC. Now, it's a good thing to mention about the plate is because some of you guys hit us up about some obscure heads that you really don't see. And the issue is that you have to make a precision ground plate to put it in the machine. So it's not just easy, oh, we could just stick the head in the machine or just port it, flow it, put it in the machine and cut it. You actually have to make a plate to go in it and it's expensive. Some of these plates get into like the $1,500 to $2,500 range and it really doesn't make sense to put that effort, a whole lot of effort into that and not get the return, or we're just gonna charge you for that and who wants to do that? So what we try to do is all the most popular heads, we're gonna do it in the CNC machine and because we're gonna get a plate and you have to do the digitizing, there's not, there's a lot of time and a lot of money into each cylinder head. It can get upwards into $5,000 to just do one cylinder head and then you want to get your money back and you also, I mean, we're not a nonprofit, so we actually need to make money to get this thing done. When we talk about time, it takes about an hour and a half for the machine itself to just go into it and probe it. And then said so we got to make a tool path, depending on the cylinder head, because not all heads are going to mirror. Uh, so the 4G is a pretty cool. And when I say mirror, I'm talking about you can digitize uh, both halves and then you can make that into uh, every other port. So uh, you're only porting, or you're only doing one intake, one exhaust. Well, in Mastercam talk, you're doing two intakes, two exhaust, because they use each one as a port, and then you are gonna make that all, and then you have to do the combustion chamber. It's a lot, a lot of work. Uh, on the 2J, I think we had like 40 hours into it, uh, maybe 50 hours into it because we do different revisions. Same thing on the 4G. Now we're just learning this stuff. Maybe at some point we can nail it the first time, but that hasn't been the case yet. 
because, well, we're learning how to use the program. Matt's been doing awesome at it. He's, 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 he's really the saving grace here. Now I'm probably gonna make a video on, is the CNC better? Now, I'm gonna say on a 4G63, the biggest thing that we've worried about in the past was, uh, and you heard me on the, if you, you watch the Street Alpha podcast, you heard me talking about how the 4Gs are actually the worst cylinder head we do. What's the most inconsistent cylinder head that you've come across? 4G63. They are ridiculous. I think all of them too, like from first gen to Evo, ridiculously all over the place. So I had to redesign basically everything we did for the last 15 years to make it work on the CNC. So people think that, oh, you just like throw a head in, like you just tell, hey, pour it to a head. No, you have to do it by hand first. So everybody thinks that like when you're doing the combustion chamber, they should all be the same. Well, I get you, but OEM is not the same. So how important really is it? It's probably the worst head that we've ever messed with. And when I say worse, I don't mean the worst flowing. I'm saying that the head has a lot of core shift. So the CNC machine is a dummy. It only knows what we tell it to do. And when you digitize one cylinder head, it does not mean that that's gonna to transpire to every cylinder head and they're all gonna be the same. Actually, it's a casting, so they're all gonna be different. Every port's gonna be different. Every chamber is gonna be a little bit different than the first one because it's a casting and people think that you know it's going to be super precision yes if we were making billet cylinder heads here every one of them would be the same but that's not the case what the case is here is you're dealing with the same casting and they're not so we put a bunch of holes in many 4g's the first time we did the digitizing on our 4g head so we had to keep shrinking the port and we shrunk the port almost 40 foul a millimeter uh, in order to get it so we didn't have to worry about putting holes in the heads or certain heads because it wasn't every head um, because of core shift. And that is just a reality of porting cylinder heads if you're doing a casting.